Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Are we ready to start talking? Oh yeah, I'm done. I'm done ready. About this show. I'm excited. Like, about this movie? Really? Well, yeah, that too. Yeah? I, I I love this movie, actually. Why? It's fun. It's campy. Okay. I love it. It's just, nah, I like it. I thought it was awful. I wanted, <laughs> I really wanted to like this because I remember it fondly from when I watched it as a child. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably around age seven, I want to say. Yeah, it came seven. out in 84, so. Yeah. Yeah, we were seven. But just looking back on it and like, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. This movie is mm-hmm. a direct response of really, really high grade 70s cocaine. So, Matthew, for the record, tell us what movie we're talking about. Today. Oh, we're, we're talking about Ice Pirates. There will be spoilers. It's an old movie. Watch the game. And you are? <laughs> I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And this was entirely fueled by 70s cocaine. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to argue on that because the original budget for this movie was $20 million. Uh-huh. And it was supposed to be a very serious science fiction movie. And that look was, what happened to I, it. I, and it. No, and MGM went in and they said, fuck you guys, we're taking our money, you now have $8 million, you don't have the sets that we promised you, you don't have the director we promised you, you have to do with, you know... No way, man. One cut. A lot of these people were just reading lines that they had just seen. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> I mean, I know. And and somebody it's, was like, fuck it. it's, oh, oh, it's, it's fucking fine. Next scene, next scene. They used a lot of, of uh, prop, you know, the dome scenes when they're going, when they're going into the, the planet. You know, all the the with the with the monorail that was in the tube. Oh yeah, yeah. That was all from Logan's Run. Yeah. So, which I don't know if anybody's ever really watched that that have listened to us. So. No, that's all right. Um, I, I I wanted to really like this. I really did. It's tongue in cheek. It makes so much fun it's, about itself. It really doesn't. There are there there were <laughs> there were a few things I liked about it. Like there was uh, Boris Vallejo art scattered everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the uh, the asteroids game as the state of the art defense system. Mm-hmm. That was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> we were watching this, and suddenly that happened. It's like, oh my god, that is. Uh, it's like then, he, then he's like, oh, I lost. Oh, <laughs> I mean, wah, 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 there, there wah, were things wah. I like. All I remember from my childhood viewing was space herpes, mm-hmm. and, Which, and and that and that kind of permeated into pop culture references. Yeah. And uh, the castration conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. I remember that very vividly. (laughs) I think most of us that watch this as a kid around the same age as you and I, that's the biggest thing that they they remember about that. So for those of you that don't really know the movie, uh, the film takes place in a distant future where water is so scarce and rationed that is considered an immensely valuable substance. That is a stupid, stupid, (laughs) stupid premise. What is even more stupid is the fact that the commodity and the currency is ice cubes. That's, you know, as that's the currency that you get. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. It wanted to be Dune. It tried to be serious. I think that was probably a carryover from the serious space drama. I I get myself through this movie. Because it came out the same (laughs) year. (laughs) So the Templars of Mithra, the planet Mithra, control the water, and they destroy worlds that have natural water. It's a lot of world destroying, leaving the galaxy virtually dry. Pirates dedicate their lives to raiding ships and looting the ice from the cargo holds to make their living. You know, I I rarely like like a remake. Mm -hmm. I I don't like them, just in general. But I'd like to see a remake done of this. I I, I think it, it could be done so much better now. I, I think Idris Elba would be a great Jason. Well, to- hold on. Let's talk about the remake when we get into the characters in the later <laughs> section. Right. So did, this is movie is basically, after watching it again, it's just basically Jason and the Argonauts. That's that's what it is, in my opinion. I no. can see that. Yeah. I, I, d- yeah. I disagree. It's not. No? Okay. Well, I mean, it's nowhere near as, as, no. as 
thrilling and epic a story <laughs> as Jason and the Argonauts, but there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the the one liners, the the zingers oh, that the they zingers. delivered, just every time I just groaned in pain. There yeah. was what I thought was actually a solid moment of comedy, and it was a quick moment that you would easily just forget. It would just it just happened and it moved on, but it was both funny Mm -hmm. and it was also a technical nod to the fact that the writers had a little bit more knowledge of what they were talking about of of the comedy than you might think that they did and that was when they were going through what i call the airport scene which was really just the the escape from the party oh yeah yeah the escape from the party they burst out of this hallway, and there are these two guards right in front of them, and they smash glass on their heads. And then the guards turn around like, what? Now, I thought that was a brilliant moment of comedy. Because, because they're wearing chain mail. Because they're wearing chain mail. Mm-hmm. But not just that. If this were any lower budget, it wouldn't have mattered if they were wearing chain mail. That gag would have worked. But the writers put in there that they were wearing armor and it protected them against the stupidest of old tricks i thought it was a very nice funny nod it was a very good technical nod that was the only one i like the ball shaving bit where they're going down the conveyor belt Uh, (laughs) they're they're getting shorn yeah oh the 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 the, the hedge trimmers and not even doing no no no. when when they they get to the two ladies who do your nethers oh Uh, yeah (laughs) Uh, we don't think you'll be up for <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> that actually got a tired chuckle out of me. Ah, uh, tired chuckles are sometimes fine. The two greatest actors in this movie were barely used: Ron Perlman, Angelica Houston, and Angelica Houston. Yeah. Who who remembers Angelica Houston as hot? I had no idea. Um, uh, I did. I didn't. I did. Did you know Morticia watch the Adams, Adams family? family? Yeah, thank you, Adams family. Was that Angelica Houston? That, that was Angelica, Angelica Houston. Houston. I remember Angelica Houston being super hot. Well, Never mind. Angelica Houston <laughs> in the movie that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was she Angelica used to be a model. Um, yeah. She lived with uh, Jack Nicholson for many years and lived with. Yeah, lived with. Yeah. <laughs> quotes. She was Morticia. Yeah, she was Morticia <sighs> in the Adams family. In the Adams family values, but not yeah. Morticia in the third Adams family movie. That was like I take that back. I have always to. remembered her. As being super <laughs> I just, I just didn't realize that was her as well. Yeah, apparently Daryl Hannah played uh, Morticia in the third Adams family movie. So let's just forget about that. Yeah, yeah never um, happened. I really like there was a, a very human moment that I did like, uh, which was uh, when Ron Perlman gets his hand cut off, and they're coming back onto the boat after their escape. Mm-hmm. And he hands him the hand, and he looks up at him. And he goes, "Thank you." <laughs> I mean, just this, this really heartfelt. Well, I, I think it's funny when he loses his hand. He just shouts out, "And don't forget my hand!" Yeah. Like this happens all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's it's a shame because the two people who were actually acting. Uh, well, there there was actually three. It was uh, who was the guy they were looking for? What was his name? Pershnickety, whatever. Lanky Dave or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Dusty, do you have the list up? I, I have the, the the major cast list up, not yeah, the yeah. entire cast. That's fine. Yeah. So he was he was pretty solid. Yeah. He yeah. was also a very good actor. And yeah. I, I know I know him from whatever. My but, favorite moment of that whole scene were the animals. Oh, and yeah. The fact oh, that yeah. they took the animals with yes, them. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I also like Space Gophers. The Space Gophers. Space Gophers was Space fun. Gophers are on the poster for the movie. I also yeah. liked mm-hmm. the uh, Amazon women defending Super Geek. Super Geek Ed. Oh, yeah. Why did they do that? Because um, Boris Vallejo was huge at the time, so they got an entire female gym, and they, they put them in skimpy bikinis and gave them mm-hmm. swords, which and, I'm and, a and big a f- fan of. A few of them, they airbrushed yeah. like muscle, yeah. muscle I mean, definition I was, I was a fan of that. I like strong women. <laughs> I really do. There were a few of those that it was clearly airbrushed on mm-hmm. muscle definition. A, a girl with yeah. muscles? <sighs> yeah. That whole, I don't, okay, that guy made, I didn't understand him. Why was he there? What was his oh, thing? Bru- uh, Who when, was he? His character's name, his character name was Wendon, and that was played by Bruce Valanche. Whatever, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Yeah. Who I was he? I don't know. He I had mean, no I expected, purpose. I expected him to break out dice. That, <laughs> that whole side story meant nothing. No. Yeah. yeah. It, it was just a it was, it was an excuse for a room full of scantily clad women crawling all over our hero. They could which, have done I, No, no, no. I am down with that as, as a plot device. <laughs> and this movie plot needed device. more of that. They could have done that at any point. 
Yeah, they, they really they should have. have. Yeah. yeah. At the, the weird 80s disco party that happened. I love the dancing in that. <laughs> <laughs> the masks under the masks. The yeah. shaking of the hands. Oh, well, my hit, God. The whole thing with... You with, see, that, that's, that brings me right back to the Coke. That whole scene <laughs> could not have happened without a substantial mountain of cocaine. Of cocaine. Oh, okay. All right. Well, the whole thing with Wendon is that he supposedly had... A lot of cocaine. Uh, <laughs> no, it was the, he supposedly had the the our the, the 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 princess's father. That was supposed to be the whole thing, yeah. and he had a rope and he had a, a robot of her father. I well, I mean, I got so, that, but why? Yeah, why? It, was it, he, it, it didn't. It didn't matter. Yeah. No, this is nothing. No, you you can follow the writing process, and it makes no sense until you add in. Cocaine. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, this, this whole movie was a whole bunch of guys sitting around a table going, and then, and then, and then. No, I think a lot of it was like, we just lost $12 million. What are we going to do? And they did more cocaine. Yeah, we lo- <laughs> lost $11 million. <laughs> you know, what? as a side note of something you said earlier, space cocaine, <laughs> this movie is the source of me adding space in front of anything oh, yeah. that happens to do in space. I remember this even as a as a kid or as a teenager loving this movie, adding space in front of everything because of space herpes. Oh, space herpes. Space herpes. That, uh, the whole scene where, like, you know, they're, they're having dinner and it comes out of the turkey. You have to carve the initial and decision to release the juice <laughs> and Ron Perlman space oh my oh it was great and, and he was so sad why because he's a good actor yes Even Ron Perlman had... is great but the whole the whole part of that you know afterwards when they're like oh we just found out about you know that they're, they're playing off of each other about with either they just found out about it. it's been there for a couple of days and everyone's like oh my god you have space herpes that's so dangerous I, I thought it was their facial expressions were great I yeah, like I guess the, I, I, I like the line <laughs> Where they're like, he wants us to bring him a sandwich. And he goes, yeah, or some cake. <laughs> I mean, that, that was by the, the great John Matuzak, and, and he, is, he is deceased. When I looked through the, oh, was that the big guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he was, was a foot. He, he was a football player, player six foot eight, yeah. uh, three, uh, 280 pounds, football player. He played for the, the Raiders at one point. Uh, and this ties into one of our previous movies. He played Sloth in the Goonies. Oh, was that the same That's guy? Sloth. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no wonder I liked him. There was a scene where they're back, uh, they're all walking together, and he is walking right behind Ron Perlman. And mm-hmm. Ron Perlman's a tall dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this guy towers yeah, over him. I, I, I know his feeling. I'm a big guy. I have some decent muscles, right? And... I, I go to work, and then one day this giant who shares my first name shows up. <laughs> looking at you, fucking Maddie. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm small again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, I hate you. And most of my friends, I'm taller by a couple inches than most of my friends, but I get around you, and I feel like I'm the short guy. I get around you know Vinny, and I get around Maddie, and I'm like, I hate all of you Vinny's guys. Vinny's my height. But Vinny Matt, seems taller. Maddie is seven fucking feet tall. Vinny seems taller than you. He's bulkier. Well, none of them share the bulk of John Matuzak. That oh, guy was yeah. just a monster. He yeah. was huge. I love how he kept popping up. I also, like, I also, I'm in armor now. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> now I'm not. He actually <laughs> like, did a very good job too. I mean, he was a when, good when, actor. When you, when you think of when you think of a, a celebrity, you think of a celebrity sports star, and then your mind tends to something towards like space jam and you're like uh, yeah or or even even towards like someone like the rock the rock is actually rock a fairly is decent no no i know I, I, like I agree him. i agree and i think i think john uh john matuzak was on his way to being of i think caliber. so too because everything i saw him do i thought was really good some yeah. of the yeah. best scenes in the movie and and he was on his way he had taken some acting classes but he unfortunately passed of heart failure Big guys um, have to worry about that shit. No, that was drug induced. <laughs> yeah. All that, All that cocaine. cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he overdosed on I forget what it was. Uh, yeah, he had it, our heart failure. So this movie could not be made today. Oh no, no, this, no! I no. think it could. This oh, no. overt racism. No, no well, there, would, there would have to be things that would the racism, would have to be the changed. Rape jokes. The, you know, I I like, thought yeah, I was very no. un PC, mm-hmm. and I am. Until, well, for Portland. Um, <laughs> I'm very PC for, say, Texas. But, uh, yeah, for Portland, I'm very un-PC. 
And then I sat down and watched this, and I felt some of the horror of my area <laughs> rub off on me. <laughs> when he goes to steal the princess, and they stop him, and he goes, whatever happened to rape and pillage? Just like, <laughs> oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, they dropped the N-bomb, and yep, there was... They did. Uh, Going to make mention of that, yeah. And uh, there was, uh, there was just, there was just some stuff in there that, to a '70s conscious, was fine. But to to what we have now, to what how we do to, yeah. now, yeah. I was like, oh damn! Like the uh, the black robot pimp. That was. I'm sorry. That was funny to me. That, that was, was hilarious. So racist. Yeah, 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 but it was so funny. <laughs> but fun story is that if you watch the credits all the way through, because we watched the credits mm-hmm. all the way through, I, I saw the because we voice, wanted yeah. to see if there was any note on where it was filmed, and there wasn't in the credits. But the black robot pimp has its own mm-hmm. section of call out at the very end that it specifically was provided by some special effects company. Yeah. Uh, most of the movie was filmed in a steel factory in Pennsylvania. Yeah, like that whole uh the assembly castration line. scene. Yeah. That was like a bottling factory. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everything in the ships, it was all in like one big factory that oh, was man. like shut down for a union strike at the time and they were like can we film? Yeah. So I want to mention something that we'll bring back when we go into alignments later. The The thing that made me think that this movie couldn't be made today is when he sees Sleeping Beauty and he just fucking looks under a shirt. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's like today, moments before he talks about raping her. Today, mm-hmm. that would be what a rape the scene. Fuck? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, there was also, I think there was a, I, I, there was a line that had been removed. I think it was removed from it because even for at the time, it was a little, it was a little risque of referencing what she you know she was laying there what was i supposed to do not just take her or something like that so he is a pirate yeah i mean let's face it jack sparrow is not and never has been a pirate he isn't a he is a a floopy drunk a A pirate he fails (laughs) upward yeah (laughs) a pirate on the other hand is not a nice person which is why i'm on the the side of the royal navy not of a course. pirate. <laughs> I'm 100 percent with yeah. you on that. Yeah. Um, however, I would like to say something about that scene. Uh, not only about the the shitty shitty cryo tube that oh my that God. did not fit back in when he lowered it again. I think this it was is, more of like a vaping tube. But the set <laughs> is dry the, ice. The the vapor playing across her mm-hmm. that was hot. That was that was super hot. Uh-huh. I yeah. liked that a lot. That was that was a well done scene. There were a lot of interesting little background gags. That there I was a lot of stuff that almost really worked in this movie. Well, again, you know, the vapor was pretty cool. The asteroids game mm-hmm. was pretty cool. The- Did you notice uh, when the the crew members were they were watching the sports ball? And I say sports ball because it, briefly, I, yeah, because then that's he actu- moved in front of the sports ball and there was no more sports ball. There was a- those were actually scenes from. Uh, uh, James Conn's rollerball yeah, movie. Yeah. Rollerball. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I also like how the one character who, in reality, was a former football player, was talking about how it was a dangerous sport. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I liked the uh, when they were all made into you know eunuch yeah. eunuch slaves, and they're they're being purchased. Yeah, and they're like, "What about the black one? Oh yes, we found the very popular." <laughs> and then his smile <laughs> was fantastic. <laughs> Like he just gave the smuggest little uh huh uh-huh. <laughs> smile. Yeah. All right. So I uh, did oh, you happen to the robot child getting run over? Mama, mama. <laughs> oh my god! What the fuck kind of horrific <laughs> shit is that? And it, it's called back in, in a later scene. Like it's they run back, back in that direction, and the child <laughs> is still calling out for its dead parent. What about the dead green lady? They just blew her up. Oh, oh my like god, a frog lady! Yeah, that fro- was frog so lady sad. With, the, with the pretty blouse. Yeah, she was just out for an outing and wanted to have some fun, and they fucking blew her up. Yeah. And then and then the car was okay. Car. Yeah, the car was okay. <laughs> okay, so I have a question. Because I know you like Angelica <laughs> Houston so much. She's one of your favorite actresses and you you know She is pretty decent. Yeah, I know. So because she changed her outfit more than Madonna, Elton John, David Bowie, and Beyonce combined in this movie. What? Pretty much. I really? think so. Okay. Yeah. Where are you going? What was her what, what do you what was one of her favorite outfits? I like the first one with the wire. It was very bad. Shoulder Mad pads. Max. Yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't even notice the outfit changes. Oh, she, she changed like almost thing. every other scene. Oh, yeah. She changed she outfits. Did. It was outfits thing. were so I also like the one she ended in. That the, kind of Valkyrie the, thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was good too. Yeah. 
Because there was a... The costume and set design was actually very she was, well done. Yeah. She was in the movie so little that I lost track. I, I didn't even notice the outfit changes. I, she, I, she didn't have enough screen time. to me be because, A, I like cheekbones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, B, um, she was doing... She, she had very few lines, but she was emoting a lot with her face. I yes. wonder what she would have to say about this movie today. I miss real cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I had read an article that the the young woman that played uh, Valeria in Conan the Barbarian mm-hmm. was originally supposed to play <sighs> this part that Angelica Houston. That was my first real crush. But oh God, I know. But you she bring just... me a sword woman any day of the week. Fuck your fainting women. <laughs> so you want to live forever? What's that? You want to live forever? You want to live forever? <sighs> But she didn't want to deal with movies anymore, so she tapped out. Mm-hmm. But then she came back for Conan the Destroyer. Did all the uh, the robots look like modern Megatron to you? They all looked like Rock'em Sock'em robots. Yeah, I, I think that's the what face, they look like. Though, yeah. The face looks like the reincarnation of Megatron I've, in the newer movies. I, I, I see that. The, those movies. I, gr- I can agree with you on that. I, I w- I, I've watched them, but it's just because I miss Peter Cullen's voice. I miss mm. Optimus's voice. Just rewatch the series, man. Just I have watched the series. I have. <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> One must stand and one must fall. You know, man, if I had that voice, I would rule the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So this movie was directed, <laughs> oh, my God, by Stuart Raphael. Uh He's done two sci-fi movies, if you guys don't know. This one and then one of my other campy kind of favorite time, five, time, time travel movies, The Philadelphia Experiment. Did you get that was a really oh, good movie. Yeah. 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 So a little different. Yeah, yeah. He's also known for That was a significantly better movie than yes, this. But we're yeah. gonna go even take a step a couple steps backward oh. on good movies. He's also done Mac and Me. Oh, oh he also why did, you hurt me so much. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was an actual clearing up. Oh, I thought you were like about to vomit. No, no that was <laughs> okay. <laughs> He also did oh. Mannequin 2 on the move. Okay, seriously, you're killing And me he wrote the Wesley Snipes opus, Passenger 57. That was his opus? <laughs> I'm just, I thought he was Blade. <laughs> I thought he was Demolition Man. Ooh, yeah. Uh, that's that's a good movie. Thought but uh, on the list. Is he still alive? What happened to Wesley Snipes? He wants to re- bring up, uh, he wants to do Blade. He wants to be in the MCU. He went. He went to prison for a while. Taxes, yes. And then he came back and did some more stuff. He did huh. this horrible, like Western uh, zombie movie that's just, just fucking pathetic. Yeah. So anyway, Wesley Snipes isn't in this movie. No, no. So the cinematographer, and neither, neither is um, uh, 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 the the villain, um, villain from Flash Gordon, Max von Sydow. He's in this. Who? He's I saw just, him in the credits. He's just an un. He's just a dude out in the desert. He was a cameo. He was, he was one of the, the bounty. Dude, yeah, it? he was one of the bounty hunters. Oh, Max von Sydow. He was in the credits, and was I was, it? and then I was like, "Who the fuck was he?" I well, love him. Well, the villain was basically just a random you know, villain number six. Random, yeah, no, it was, what, was it he was the guy with horns? No, no, he wasn't the guy with horns. He was just in that on that big skull death head bad really ma- thing? bad Mad Max thing. Yeah, he was just on. There. I couldn't pick him out. I couldn't either. I didn't. I didn't even. Yeah, go to all the, all I looked the talent for him also. here got nothing. I looked for I know where he's at, but I've I looked for him on each of those people. I'm like, I don't know which one you are. And instead we get Princess Boring and the, I actually liked her. She the did third, okay. third rate Tom Selleck. The I, third rate Tom Selleck I did yeah. not like. The titular hero, uh fucking Spencer for Jason. Hire. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was, he was like bad. Every, let's try and put everything of like Han Solo and not, I mean, not make it good. Not Kevin Costner bad, but pretty bad. No, he was. And I just I also didn't like the ponytail. That well, that that, that was the pirate thing. He had. I know, ribbon. but it just with his hair, it just did not work. No, nope. I like the chamber with uh, with Passion Storm. Oh my god! Where they god. just go through that all was, the different uh, romance covers. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, that, that was I was cracking up. That was early that. Hollow yeah. Deck. That was. Oh nice. my god! I also like how the rain was coming from two different hoses because it was going at mm-hmm. diagonals mm-hmm. at each other. <laughs> I was also thinking like water is so precious. Yeah, water is really precious. I also look enjoy, at this. Yeah, I also look en- at this. <laughs> I also enjoy space nipples. Those are my favorite. Space nipples. Are great. I like space, space boobs too, and I didn't get any. 
there zero no gravity is so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that shit the scene right that up. followed the the fucking scene, the uh the whole fight scene over the time dilation. Mm-hmm. God. That was hilarious. Oh, the time Except dilation. The sound was effect. Great. The sound effect that they used. <laughs> 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 no, the music was terrible. Yeah. The whole all the music and all the sound effects in this. Oh yeah, the Foley terrible. guy should have been dragged out into the street oh, with God, a the big Foley bag and the cocaine. ADR. Uh well, not no, just the the music. The music was yeah. fucking terrible. It was so terrible. the music was done by Bruce Broughton, and the green screen was awful too. And Bruce Broughton has also Probably composed blue screen at the time, but uh, the first episode of The Orville. I know you guys watched He's, that. That was actually really good. Uh, I liked The Orville. The show was really good. Yeah, the 1998 movie Lost in Space, which I'm actually looking forward to. It the, wasn't the bad. Netflix oh redo. God, that movie was terrible. It I liked it. Bad. Other than Matthew LeBlanc, I liked it. That movie was terrible. Um, What's wrong with Joey? Not in a sci-fi movie. I kept, kept waiting for him to What's go. What's wrong with Joey? I kept, he, like Joey. every time the girl came in, I kept waiting for him to go. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No, true. <laughs> Honestly, then, I don't. Can't, I can't stand anybody from the Friends cast. None of them. I don't like any of them. They're all terrible. I thought in Band of Brothers, I love that Ross was the most hated person. <laughs> yeah, he's the most hated for a reason. <laughs> fantastic. He's fucking Ross. I, see, I like Jennifer Aniston. I She's like her. Boring. Movies. She eh. has. She has just no expression. She eh. is always just Jennifer Aniston. Oh eh. no no no. I mean, uh, not office. Was it office space? Uh, she was in office space. Yeah, I like my flair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was bad. The horrible bosses. Uh, yeah, it's no. I, I, there's some decent actors there. I I can't. No, I just can't agree with that. I uh, I don't think I've liked anything that any of them have done. Okay. Um, the Bruce Broughton who did the music also did. Chandler Tombstone. was in fucking. Uh, was in uh, what is it? Psych. Chandler is terrible in everything. <gasps> Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, Tombstone. <laughs> I'm not going to say And then also defending. did the music for So I Married an Axe Murderer, one of my personal favorites. That is a good movie. Uh, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. <laughs> and The Monster Squad. <laughs> okay. So he's had a few decent, you know, scores in his, in his repertoire. Ron Perlman has a fantastic line in this. What is it? Well, they're they're going through the the time dilation storm at the mm-hmm. center of the galaxy to mm-hmm. get to the seventh planet, which turns out to be Earth. That was Africa in the Middle East, right? Yeah, that yeah. that was yeah. Um, but like, every I, space I, movie is going I, after Earth. I, I hope you don't mind, but I have no intention of facing this sober. And then he takes <laughs> his round flask and just... Uh, uh, you uh, know, uh, when we first saw that, I was like... Such a baby. No, that looked like a bong. We are like, that's a space bong. <laughs> Either way, not sober. Ron Perlman was so young in this movie. Yeah, he still looks like a caveman, and yeah, I, 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 everything Ron Perlman has always stolen the scene. He's always been mm-hmm. a very good actor. It's pretty. Did good. you ever? Yeah. Did you see him in the Name of the Rose? Yeah, yeah. He where he was stole. The, the hunchbacky guy, and yes. uh, what was it? The Quest for Fire, mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, or as I call it, Cave Titties. <laughs> very good movie. <laughs> We've reached the end of my notes for this movie. Really? It's like... <laughs> it was, I, I've got, I don't I've see got a paper in front I've of you. Got a lot, I've got a lot more on this. <laughs> my notes... Yeah, but are they interesting is the question. Like, I, I think so. Okay. Well, you know, you made a comment a few moments ago uh, before we went on a tangent about the, the, the green screening, so the, you know, the production. There was this uh, scene at the very beginning. It was obviously their, their big budget one where they're doing a fleet mm-hmm. of Templar, uh, the, the convoy, yeah. the, where they're moving water. And you can see the block cut out. Oh, yeah. Cut oh, it's out. terrible. The yeah, cut it's, out. There's terrible. a lot of like visible matting around now, the, the moving now you, objects. You, you can see that in a lot of old ones. Mm-hmm. But this is this is really bad. Like uh, Flesh Gordon mm-hmm. has better green screen than this did, mm-hmm. and that was that was a garbage fun camp. We should do Flesh Gordon. <sighs> Stop <need> shouting, <laughs> you dildo! I need a beer. <laughs> I'll be back. All right, we'll just keep talking. We'll continue. <laughs> the production cost on this, uh, as I said at the top of the show. Hey, can I have one too? It was initially twenty million dollars, and for nineteen eighty four, well, production time of eighty three, that was a good chunk of change. But yeah. MGM went, no, nope, you get eight, and you got to make it into a sci fi comedy, not a, a hard sci fi. Because after Star Wars, there was this like litany of bad sci fi movies that were coming out, and they weren't doing really well. So Hollywood was like, you know. We're not making as much money as like Star Wars or Star Trek was, so let's let's kind of dial it back. Did this a one bit. flop? 
this was it was a moderate return. The, you know, they 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 got eight million for it, uh, and the the U.S. return was fourteen point two million. So they they did a moderate return on it. it, not bad. But they there was a, a whole bunch of movies that came out that same year that were sci fi related. Some were really good, some were okay, and some were really really bad. Uh, there was Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Why do I think this was the 70s? I saw no, this 1970 was, somewhere. Nope, it, 1984. This came out in 84. Wow, this is really bad for 84. <laughs> like, this is this is way so, worse. So these are the movies that came out in 84 that are sci-fi that, that were holding their own, and then there was this. Then you also had, so Star Trek Three: Search for uh-huh. Spock, not one of my favorite Star Treks. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. That was all right, if mm-hmm. I recall. But I, I remembered this being all right, too. So. Brother from Another Planet. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Dune. Oh. Starman, which is one of my favorites uh, in sci-fi realm. So we've got Jeff I Bridges. I think I remember that. That's pretty good. You should check out 2010. Oh, that was a good one. The horrible, horrible, horrible movie Life Force, which is the space vampires. Mm. Horrible. I've seen that one, yeah. Ghostbusters, The Terminator, Conan Terminator. the Destroyer, The Last Starfighter, Dreamscape, also with Max von Sydow, and Night of the Comet, another really campy movie. I guess campy, I'm drinking campy. the original Olympia beer. It's the water. <laughs> That's a hell of a thing to put on a beer. Apparently, my movie list doesn't mean anything compared to a can of beer. Oh, I haven't had one of these in like four <laughs> years. I drink whiskey. Wait, wait. Ready? Oh, you, you want to go first? We just did two beers at the same time. <laughs> also, you know if I had a million dollars, I'd do two beers at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> the movies that came out in March of 84, you had uh, Against All Odds. And then you had This is Spinal Tap. Oh, yeah, Tank. I love Tank. Tank is a fun movie. I, I wanted a Tank after uh, watching that movie as a child. So did I. I think every, every kid wanted a Tank after watching that movie. Greystroke, The Legend of Tarzan. Uh, Romantic Greystoke? Stone. Yes. Not that, Gray Stroke. <laughs> that was the porn <laughs> version, apparently. <laughs> gray Stroke. <laughs> it's what I do after hours. Leave me the fuck alone. Uh, Roma- Get out of my room. <laughs> God, there's like a clean water, gray water joke there, I think, but I would fuck it up. Um, Romancing the Stone. I think you just did. That yeah, was a good movie. I love Romancing the yeah. Stone. Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, and The NeverEnding Story. That's everything that came out in March of 84 that are that in a, the same that genre. That was a good area. Yeah, it was decent. It was some good stuff. Yeah. This was a piece of shit. <laughs> to that. Yeah, this, this was not a 70s movie. I don't I don't know where no, you got this, that. This was a 70s movie that just happened to be made in the 80s. <laughs> it, um, it, it felt, I, I don't know why I think that. I mean, it, it must have been in the early credits. Something and, 70s. Angelica Houston was, I think, 34 years old when, when she did this movie. Huh. So I think everybody was about in their 30s. Yeah. Huh. I mean, I, I have no idea. Um, yeah, that's all I got, too. Do you got anything else, Dusty? Uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't a lot of deep mining. For, there's not a lot of information out there. There's no director commentary. There's no special edition. There never will be a special edition for this movie. <laughs> God, and I, I hope kind of understand Thank and see why. <laughs> um, there, there was a bit that, that I found in my mining off of, uh, off of a blog from, uh, oh, what's his name? Sugarfly McQueen who has a blog called The Ship is Sinking, and he... Apt. Okay, go on. (laughs) So there's a lot of things he compare... This this writer, as I don't don't know if it's a a, a guy or or a woman, that compares a lot of some of the things from Star Wars to Ice Pirates. Uh I was going to throw those in, but I think we're starting to chew a little bit long on on this side of the the podcast. So So why did we go here? I don't know. (laughs) Because I explain (laughs) things in way too long of commentary sometimes. Um, Yeah, I got nothing then. Okay. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. (laughs) Not counting the quick break we just took for beers. And we'll be back to to talk about the game of all aspects of this fun-filled romp through the spaceways. Cocaine! Space cocaine. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 
fuzzy dice that go in your mirror. That's good stuff. If, you, uh, <laughs> if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. This is the first beer I've had in a really long time. Yeah, I know. You never drink beers. I'm really thirsty. And every time you come <laughs> over, we're like, all right, we're recording. I need a shot of something or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I got I beer. Cider. You're like, I don't drink beer. I'm really fucking thirsty today. <laughs> well, you know, there's this great thing on this whole, since we're talking about water and planet of ice, there's a tap over there. You can get water. Why don't you take your Amish bullshit there? <laughs> And speaking Got of beer, puritanical bullshit. <laughs> this gaming section of Half Movies Will Game is brought to you by the original Olympia beer. It's the water. I, that's probably going to be like new to them. Honestly, it, it kind of tastes like water. It's it's a very, <laughs> very light beer. It doesn't even have like a narrative statement on it. It just says, it's the water. You know, some beers. I like style... that the horseshoe on it says, good luck. <laughs> that's that's my favorite Have part of this. Can. I want to I want to take a look because I've never looked at one of these cans. <laughs> this gold plated can, trademark. Good luck since 1896. Wow. Well, we are here to talk about some gaming, and now that we have some beer in us, at least two of us. Does it does it actually give you, like, a buzz? You drink it's enough beer, of anything, it will, yeah. It's okay. basically PBR with another name. Of, does it? You know? uh, it's probably cheaper than PBR. It's, it's the same price brew. at the store. Yeah, wow, was, the sell by... Wow, the, it doesn't bad. have a percentage on they it. Had, they had this, they had Oli, they had PBR, they had Ranier. I mean, this is basically Natty Ice with a different... Yeah, that's what they all are. Yeah, seriously, it's it's, it's not just, it's not the champagne of beer. It, it's just a that's Pilsner. you know that's actually fairly decent. Uh, no, the I, High Life, I don't mind. High it. Life is all right. I, I don't mind it. So speaking games. of games, <laughs> <laughs> we it's live not in the beer High Life. Games have have Playing beer game. will game. <laughs> so Dusty, tell us about the characters. <laughs> all right, and so we're going to start uh, off them down. with our Han Solo wannabe Robert Urich as the Jason. rapist. Yes. <laughs> Chaotic neutral. Chaotic yeah, neutral. Chaotic neutral. I can't even say he's good. No, no. he's he's not good aligned. No. Nope. At least not by today's ethics. Yeah, chaotic Which is neutral. where we're we're looking yeah. at it. Yep. So yeah. Then we have Mary Crosby as Princess Karina. I'll go chaotic good for her. I thought she was flat the whole movie pretty much. I didn't Well, I you know, this was before real successful breast documentation. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, wah, wah, wah. sad trombone. That's you, uh, it's better wah, than wah. a rusty trombone. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. No, I mean I, I thought she was all right. Um and I'm just going to go with chaotic good because she broke from the uh society she was used to. In order to get at the greater good. Okay. Was she breaking from the society or was she slumming it? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, the whole father sequence. She broke from that society. She, yeah, she had okay, reason. Okay. Breaking from society is enough to be neutral. Did she do anything else chaotic? She fucked the pirate who was, you know, titularly. <laughs> but he was just so handsome. Well, she saved him. Like she went outside. She, she saved him because she had a plan. Yeah, it wasn't a random action. Well, I'm I, I'm not going to go with lawful good for her. I wouldn't say lawful. I would say maybe a neutral good. But I, 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 could, good. I could do that. Is it yeah. is it is it slumming just because she went and found this? I know, wish she on, was just slumming it. This, that would have made for a better movie. Yeah, would have. down <laughs> on you know their luck pi group of pirates, or could she have found anybody else? She probably. Well, here's the thing. Um, because of the, the Viceroy, Grand Vizier, whatever character. Pooba. Yeah, the Grand High Pooba. Um, she could not use the resources available to her. Um, yeah. So she did have to find someone outside the system. Which isn't but she necessarily was in, chaotic, she was like it's a, just not lost. But she was yeah. in a cryonic sleep, so she wasn't out looking for anybody. That yeah, but she was, she was gotten back. And I have no idea why she was in a cryonic sleep. Yeah, that was and, never explained. I don't think it was cryonic. I think it was just one of those sleep beds, like Fifth Element. That's yeah, possible. I think okay. it was just like a, an interstellar sleep bed or something. It was just a full yeah. body bong. 
Yeah. Full body bong. <laughs> That's what it was. She was she <laughs> Hey man, we get it. You vape. <laughs> <laughs> you whole body vape. <laughs> All right. And then we have Michael D. Roberts as Roscoe. Uh he was actually fairly good. Yeah, he he was. He had some really good lines and he had some really good facial expressions. And I I I think as much as Robert and he was Urk. like the foil to the hero, the the quote unquote. Yeah, hero. exactly. I, I I that's where I was starting to go with that. I, I he was the foil and and it it played very well in every scene that he was in. I yeah. think he stole a lot of the scenes from Robert Urich. I think he acted circles around him. Oh yeah. Um, but I, I will say this: he and Robert Urich as the people with the most lines. Mm-hmm. I they were just reading them a lot of the time, but every now and then he really came out and did something good. Yeah, I think he had a lot of really good facial expressions. Yeah, I think he was the superior actor. And I'll, I'm going to go with chaotic good for him. I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. He, he was Robin Hoodie. He had his little dream yeah. of starting his own robot repair company. Yeah, but yeah, he's it worked pirate. outside the law. You know. Yeah. And then and then we have Angelica Houston as Maida. I'm going to go with uh, like lawful neutral for her. No, she's a pirate. She was the pirate, you know, which is where the neutral comes in. But she followed the pirate codes at all times. I'd have to go with when, the, when, the when, ch- when challenged. Myself. She, you know, when was the last time we s- aligned to someone as straight up neutral? Uh, it's been like five episodes ago, and I forget who it was. It's but been we a, had while. a long. <laughs> oh, God, please, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that song's out of my head now. <laughs> 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 Um, I, I don't, I, oh, fuck you. <laughs> For those of you listening who have not been God privy to it. a prior conversation, we've been getting 90s pop songs stuck in our head all night. And... It's been a while. <laughs> fuck it. Fuck the pair of you. Um, <laughs> I don't know that she's too new, true neutral. I um, wouldn't say true neutral. Personally. Because there, there's an element as at least to my understanding of the alignment there's an element of selfishness in that where you're you're looking to keep the balance over over friendship yeah, no, neutral is the weirdest fucking alignment yeah it's it's, it's real it's really hard to to put that one out there i'm I, i'm going to stick with uh lawful neutral i okay this is what are the, Make one your of case. those moments this is going to be one of those moments where i can say for d and d i would say lawful neutral and for palladium i would say unprincipled agreed yeah, it's a different set of alignments in Palladium, but I think it frequently tends to be more appropriate. Anyway, moving on. All right, moving on. We have Ron Perlman, the great Ron Perlman as Zeno. Chaotic good. Yeah, yeah, straight yeah. up. There's no way around yeah, it. No way around it. And then uh, it's Ron the, Perlman. Yeah. yeah, unless he's murdering you, he's chaotic good. <laughs> and then John Matuzak as Killjoy, also chaotic good. Also chaotic good. Yeah, yeah. I actually think he. You made a comment a few moments ago that Michael Roberts was the better actor in this movie. No, of the two, no, of the two main characters. Oh, of the yeah. two main characters. Yeah. I personally think that John Matuzak, of the lines he had, was probably the better actor in the he entire movie. He had presence. Yeah, yeah, he did his great. Face. He was, he yeah. would, his presence yeah. all, was almost akin to Brian Blessed in Flash Gordon, in my opinion. So well, let's that, not go crazy here. He was doing a good job. <laughs> no, not <laughs> going crazy. I said akin, not on the level of, but akin to. I don't know because I never heard him roar. But and no one can point, roar. Like perhaps Bly- if he Brian had Blessed. lived longer. Yes. Yeah, I could see that. You know? Because yes. the beard was impressive. The dude played sloth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So there, this is a movie, before we get into a few of the gaming aspects real quick, this is a movie that has been bounced around the last couple of years of being, it's fallen into that Hollywood umbrella of let's redo this movie. I think they should. I can agree with that to to a lot of it, but who, as the cast that we have here, Jason, Princess, Roscoe, Media, Zeno, and Killjoy, who would we put, who would you, who would you my co-hosts like to see in these rooms. Um I got Killjoy. That should be Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I can agree with that. 100% Completely. agree. Yeah. Um, as for the... Hmm. I think Ron Perlman could reprise his role. <laughs> he's he's kind of old He's old. Uh, st- he's old and janky. He's pretty old. Let, let's, let's figure out Jason. Idris Elba. Who? Idris, I, who? Elba's, Idris Elba's pretty old, too, now. 
<sighs> yeah. God, why do I do this? I movie? can make noises too. <laughs> <Okay>. Fucking <laughs> Zephar Plibowitz. Oh, what? You don't know who that is? <laughs> Have you seen The Wire? No, and I should. I've. You're not the first. What person. about Luther? Have you seen Thor? Yes. Okay. He's the black guy in Thor, if you've seen Thor. He's Heimdall. Yeah, he's Heimdall. 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 Oh. Yeah. Yeah. As Jason? Yeah. I could see it. I could. Idris Elba, I think, is. He's, is his, he a little he's, old? He's older. He's a little now. older? Okay. Yeah. He's in his years. Okay. Uh, so are we going with like more of the younger version? Okay. Uh, well, we want to match them to the ages. That I, I'm thinking like 20 to mid 30s. Okay. Yeah. Channing Tatum. Yes. I just. That would work. My only... Loved him in G.I. Joe. Wait, was he in, <laughs> it was in uh, Jupiter Ascending, right? Yes, and Magic Mike. So we're picturing him as who? Jason. Okay, yeah, I could do that. Okay. All right, the princess. Oh, oh, so, there's a lot of choices. There's so many choices. Just pick one. I don't care. Wow. <laughs> Go with a redhead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever possible. Okay. Uh, then let's go with Roscoe. Oh, that's tough. Um because everybody that I'm thinking that could play has, Roscoe has, is older is, now. Is Chris Rock too old? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. If you want to go like a young Chris Rock. No, no. If we're recasting it today. Uh, I would say Chris Tucker. <laughs> and Ruby no. Rod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, oh, man. This is tough. Um, well, you you could also, I mean... We could also flip the the gender on it. You don't have to have a guy. Oh, it would make the rape scene at the case, beginning interesting. In that case, the gal I I cannot remember her name. She played uh, the oh. female lead in Person of Interest. I have Meta. I cannot remember her oh, name. Oh, um, wait, wait, wait. Are you are you talking a root? No, she was fuck root. <laughs> she I was, was just the worst I know character your, in that I know show. your distaste for the, that the character. The cop. Oh, uh, Tajira. Uh, um, yeah. She, she, she left that show to, to go over and do Empire. Um, okay. Yeah. With the guy that was originally playing. I, I would put yeah, her I know who you're talking role. about. I know yeah. who you're talking about. Him, yep. Um, I could also see, going back real quick to Jason, uh, the hot ticket right now, Chris Evans could play Jason. I lost track of the Chris's a while ago. Uh, they're Chris Pratt, I mean. Guardians of the Galaxy. See, I've lost track yeah. of the Chris's There's a while ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. Star yeah, yeah. He, no, he's so good. He can um, play. Okay. Also for that, I think who played uh, uh, who was who is the guy also in that who was the muscle from Guardians of the Galaxy? Bald. Oh, uh, uh, Batista. Um, yeah, John Batista. He could play Killjoy. Yeah, I think John Cena could play Killjoy. Oh, John Cena. Yeah, that would be funny. That would. <laughs> Why be, not? Because he probably would do his whole hand move at some yeah. point. Uh, the too. lady who played Wonder Woman could play a very Gabino. good. Okay. Uh, 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 Meta. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then always uh, bring me a warrior. Who woman. would play? The Zeno? space herpy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't figured out Zeno. That's the last one. Zeno. Which one was Zeno? That was Ron Perlman. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh. <laughs> Who would you, Ron Perlman? <laughs> that sounds so dirty. <laughs> Did a Ron Perlman right on her back. How about Jax Teller? Charlie Hunnam. Who? Charlie Hunnam. What? You don't know who that is? Fuck you. Fuck you guys. I'm done with this. <laughs> Charlie Hunnam. He stars in the movie that we're going to be doing next time. Oh. All I saw were the... Ro- Jax Teller from Sons of Anarchy. I never watched it. He's the main character of Pacific Rim. Oh. Yeah. Okay. With the, also starts Idris Elba. Yeah, you know? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I look at Idris Elba as, as the main For the movie, movie we're doing next, I was not looking at any of the actors <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> oh, no. Not at all. I did not care. You and the robots. Yeah. I, okay. I, can, I, I can, wasn't can, even going to say I can, that. I can see who you're, who you're going with. I could see that. So anyway, let's talk about what Matthew is bringing as the next stage in the story. Yes. That we're going to play. Homeworld. Homeworld. Um, as we can see, the, seven pla- the seventh planet is Earth, which has somehow been moved to the center of the universe. I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> it's the only... No, galaxy. Excuse... Well, yeah, center of the galaxy. And it's the only one with water. Yeah. Um, it's been isolated from galactic contacts due to the, uh, the time-space variation. And uh, the future humans of Earth have evolved in this vacuum where they didn't have any intergalactic contact. So what do you suppose would happen? 
Well, I postulate mm-hmm. that um, Earth has evolved into the perfect politically correct utopian society. There is no crime. There is no hatred. There is no war. There is not even interpersonal violence. Everyone is beautiful and correct and polite and utterly without rancor or anger. What they exist. Fucking fantasy. Universe. They exist in a, in a perfect, perfect God, world. I want to shoot myself as it and is. Any any kind of violence, be it um, interpersonal, verbal, is abu- is looked at as aberrant and is treated as such. So okay, this, this sounds this, like an episode of Star Trek. This perfect shining city on the hill. Into this placid pool of perfect people, our pirates enter like a bomb. I like um, your alliteration there. Thank you. Cheers. Um, their rough and primitive force would quickly prove irresistible to the Terrans. They would literally have no way to stop them. One man with a blaster and the will to use it could take control of the planetary government. And they do. Uh, the PCs in this would play, as the, uh, would play as the party. Feel free to take anyone. There's not really a solid leadership role here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I would say that just... Pick your favorite character from the people we just mentioned. That's your party. Um, Terra is ripe for the plucking, and the pirates can easily carve the planet up into little kingdoms because there's no one there to stop them. Like, absolutely nobody. They can rule as they see fit, have little fiefdoms. Um, However, the Templars know where their ship disappeared, and they will be coming. So what the party has to do is prepare this peaceable planet to repel an invasion force capable of destroying planets and with vast armies of slow moving silly shin kicking robots armed with blades um <laughs> Those so the, the, robots. oh my god i love it. I, I i see this being played out as uh as like a wave mechanic thing where you're you're dealing with waves of goons mm-hmm. um it's it's not really it it wouldn't be a um, a, a, a skill-based game. I, I see this more as uh, chopping up mooks, like in, in uh, what game is that? What, we'll talk about it in a minute. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, but yeah, that, that's, I didn't, I didn't have much for this. Yeah, I really didn't either. I, I tried. This, this is actually uh, ripped off from an old Keith Lommer book <laughs> called Earthblood, <laughs> where one of the last earthlings is found in a circus and comes back to Earth to find a perfect placid Earth. But he's rough and tumble from being out in the galaxy, and he just whoops ass and... Takes you know, over the planet? Yeah, and, and all the girls love him. Because so he's, he's passionate and brutal. <sighs> so Demolition Man and the newest... Star kind Trek of, yeah. Darkness. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool, all right. That's the best I got for this fucking floating turd. <laughs> and the, wow. I, I, I haven't done enough cocaine to actually fucking think of something for this. All I have is Olympia beer. And that's decidedly not cocaine. And the best game that I have for this fucking turd <laughs> is Savage Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not to say that Savage Worlds is the turd nope. game, but I think Savage, Savage yeah, Worlds is badass. I, yeah, because I was like, I thought, I thought we wanted maybe them to sponsor us maybe at some point. Well, so. <laughs> Yeah, Pinnacle's fine. This is not to say anything bad about the no. game. No, I know. I know. The whole time going. I was watching this movie, I was just like, Savage Worlds, Savage Worlds, Savage Worlds, Savage Worlds. I can't think of any <laughs> fucking game better to do this movie than Savage Worlds. Okay. Because of the over the top gonzo action, the way that they just mow through mooks like it's yeah. no problem, it's Savage Worlds. And in fact, we're going to make characters for Savage Worlds. Right now. Oh, okay. excellent. Giving me no a pad and paper pen. Oh, I'll take paper. Thank pad. you. Thank you. Okay. I'll give the. Each of home. you pick one of the characters and we're going to make them right now. Tips uh, on Roscoe. I'm going to take Killjoy. Roscoe and Killjoy. Fantastic. All right. So the first thing you have are five stats. Those stats are agility, smarts, <laughs> spirit, strength, and finally, vigor. Got it. Yep. So put one dot next to each of those, and you get five more dots to put in as you wish. Now each dot is basically a die size increase. First five dot more? is a first dot is a d four. Second we get, dot is a d six. We get five more you dots. Get five you said? more dots okay. to put as you wish. Okay. What you got? Uh, two for agility, three for smart, spirit, and strength are still at one, and vigor has two. All right, and that's for Roscoe. Yeah. What do you got for Killjoy there? Oh, hang on one second. 
two for agility, two for smarts, two for spirit, three for strength, and then one for vigor. Wait, uh, for Killjoy? You're over yeah. one. Am I over one? Yep. And one? Killjoy is oh. tough, man. He's got a lot of vigor. So one for each. This is where Dusty basic math comes into play. One for each. So one, two, three. I would just put two more in vigor and call yeah. it good. Okay. All right. That works. There you go. All right. So we've got a strength of four and a vigor of three, and the rest is one. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Next, you have skills. Uh, you have 15 points for skills. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what your skills are to make this quick. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you the skills that you have, and I'll let you put the points in them. I'll start with Roscoe. As you should. Roscoe, you have... You might have investigation and put smarts next to it. And you definitely have knowledge robots, which is yes. smarts. Although I did find it interesting in the movie that if he just clipped three wires, it completely changed the programming of the robot. Well, yeah. Future robots. It, it was 80s. Yep. <laughs> you have notice, smarts. Is a big package in there? Piloting, agility. That's your big package. Repair, which is smarts. Okay. Streetwise, which is smarts. That's how I got along with the pimp. Okay. Taunt, which is smarts. Okay. And we'll call it good. Got it. You got 15 points to spread between those. So one note is that the number of points that you put in cannot exceed the base. So like, uh, what's your smarts? Three. So you can put at most three points in a smarts-related skill. Dusty. Yes. Killjoy here. Yes. All right. Did I tell you shooting? No. Give him shooting, too. I think he shot a gun. So shooting would be agility. Killjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, Killjoy, you have climbing, okay. which is strength. Intimidation, which is spirit. Okay. Uh, I think he's got piloting, agility. Yeah, because he was just, he just randomly show up on like another yeah. planet. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretty much like, hey guys, how you doing? I'm just hanging out. Uh, shooting, agility. Oh, I missed one. Mm -mm. Fighting. Oh, definitely. Which is agility. Stealth. Agility. Survival, which is smarts. He needs to disguise one, too. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. There is no disguise. What, what did uh, you say survival was? I'm yeah. sorry, agility. Survival, which is smarts. Smarts. Okay, thank you. And we'll say streetwise, which is smarts. You got 15 points. Spread them between them. The number of points you put in one cannot exceed the base. Done. Investigation one. Oh, well, sorry, oh. that's a lie. You can exceed the base. But it costs more? It costs two for one okay. over the base. That's fine. I'm good. All right, what you got? Investigation one, knowledge robots, three. Uh, notice, two. Piloting, two. Repair, three. Streetwise, one. Taunt, one. Shooting, two. Sounds fantastic. What you got, Dusty? All right, so I put my points in. So he's got one point in climb, uh, one point in piloting, one point in shooting, two points in fighting, uh, two points in survival, and two point and one point in streetwise. Now, because those are all one point, I have one point in in the agility. These yeah. that cost me two. They, they're so. going to end up costing a little bit yeah. more. So I did put a little bit more in the in the fighting and survival because he does have a good. I think in the movie he's he survive. I mean he survives the whole movie. Yeah, he does. And he just pops up wherever. So I think um, I think that's a good rounded killjoy. So each of your characters are human, and uh, in Savage Worlds, you pick a race, and in this race is human, mm -hmm. and race as human, you get a free edge, and I know what your edges are. Okay. Uh, the benefit of we're playing with a special science fiction fantasy setting, which is Ice Pirates, mm -hmm. so I'm going to say that these edges do not need to meet the requirements in the book. You get a free edge at start, which breaks requirements. <clears throat> I'm going to start with... Killjoy over here, uh, and your edge is brawny. Brawny. Like the towel. You are. <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> you completely ruined brawny. <laughs> what that means is uh, you have plus one to your toughness, and you can carry eight times your strength in pounds. Wow. Instead of five times, which is normal. And I'm going to give, uh, I've already got one over here for the. Uh, Roscoe. For Roscoe. MacGyver. Uh, you could notice, you could improvise something when the need for a tool arrives. You have no negative penalties on trait rolls for a lack of equipment in most situations. In addition, given a few simple tools, props, or devices, you can generally rig devices to help someone escape from death traps, weapons, for blah, blah, blah. MacGyver shit. Right. 
seems fitting. He was very much a MacGyver. Mm-hmm. Now, very much. I do. I'm sorry. I, I know this should have been covered in the movies, but I love when they just kept there was a hallway fight and they just kept repairing robots and sending them back in. <laughs> Oh, the, the, the time dilation yeah. scene. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty awesome. All right. Next. What you get to do is if you choose, which you want to, your characters can take hindrances to get additional points to spend on starting stuff. Okay. You can take up to one major and two minor hindrances. So I'm just going to speed through this and find some that seem appropriate. Does would is there anything like uh, kleptomaniac? Well, hold on. Okay. I got one immediately for Roscoe. Bad luck. His shit fails all the time, and he oh, finds yeah. himself in terrible situations. That is a major hindrance. And what does that buy me? That's just going to give you a major hindrance. Um, what were you asking, Dusty? If he had like kleptomania, because he, you know, would steal all the time from someone. Like it, when they when they meet him for the first time, he stole the guy's necklace to get the water. Yeah, we could make that's what's called a quirk. So okay. you have a quirk kleptomania, which is a minor hindrance. And I'm going to say both of you have wanted as a minor hindrance as well. What would be my major? That's a good question. Mine was bad luck, right? Your major was major. bad luck. Killjoy, here's a couple options. There's one, which is bloodthirsty. You never take prison. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I didn't really see in that way. No. Um, heroic? He can, eh. Possibly. He, he, he definitely kind of seemed to like the type to be like, bop him on the head, let him knock out, and then move mm-hmm. to the next person. Or Overconfident? Yes. Well, there you go. You have major overconfident. And now we're going to get you one more minor. Braggadocious? Is that in there? For him. Oh, we for got him. yours. Okay, I thought maybe there's another one for me. We got one more. We need one more minor here for Roscoe. Can you think of some flaws? I don't know if this is covered in a modern day savage world, but he seemed to have some racial problems. Like, is there anything from like a lower social strata? Because in, Outsider. Yeah, in that world, yeah, that, outsider. that was outsider would work. With. Outsider's a minor one. Okay. Yeah, he definitely seemed to deal with that frequently. This was clearly uh, a, yeah. a much more racially divided 1980s uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. space. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, so you got Outsider's a minor. So what that does, that gives you extra points to buy stuff. So here's how it works. All right. You essentially have four extra points. You can spend those one for one on skill points. You can spend two to get a new cool edge, or you can spend two to increase one of your attributes. Each one is worth one? Because you went and got two minor and Mm -hmm. one major, you have four points. Okay. And that that lets Uh, you buy Just for the ease of simplicity, I'm just going to drop them straight in. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Into the skills. So it's four points? Okay. Four points. And am I allowed to exceed my base with bonus points? What I recommend is increasing your base agility, Killjoy. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you and can retroactively smarts. modify. I was wondering yeah. about that. Okay. Increase your agility and That's increase your points. smarts. That's four points. That's okay. two. And then that all modify those skill points that you spend. One. Okay, so I'm taking smarts up one and then putting knowledge robots up one and repair up one. So, yeah, Dusty, that'll give you a few skill points back if you spent anything over those totals. That would give me six back. Okay, I'm ready. And there we did. We just right. made characters for Savage World. Nice. That, that was, was quick. Fast. Yeah. That was 10 minutes. Quick, Less. easy. Uh, whenever I try to pitch this game to people, I'm like, they're like, okay, I want to play a game we want to play right now. And I say Savage Worlds. First off, the game costs you $10. Second off, character creation costs you 10 minutes. It literally is that quick. Now, if you have, if Good. you want to make a more complex character, you can kind of look through the edges and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I've got a couple copies of the rules, so if you guys want to peruse them, you can look through and you can kind of pick and choose things if you want. You can custom make a character, but still, just with the core book, and I've got the science fiction companion, so we can give them some laser guns and a spaceship. That's Savage World. Uh, How does equipment work? Is it just assumed, or do you spend anything on it? You get, uh, by default, you get 500, quote unquote, dollars. Right. To credits, buy some dollars. Credits, units or whatever. of water, ice you cubes. You get 500 units. You get 500 ice cubes to buy things, and everything is based on a relevant value. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now you can get an edge that gives you more money to buy more stuff, like rich or filthy rich. Mm-hmm. You can start poor, too, with like no money. Right. 
generally when I run Savage Worlds, I just give people stuff. I'm like, because typically when I've run Savage Worlds, it has always been in a game where the characters were in a group, like a military function. Uh, Dusty played for a short time in a Savage World space game that I, I ran. I loved that character. Based on a comic book series called The Alien Legion. And it was this brutal game just like the comics the comics you never know which character is going to survive it's this brutal really interesting comic of galactic war where the characters are a group of mercenaries well not mercenaries kind of they're they're kind of mercenaries they're more like a special forces unit of the government and the government hates that unit so the government's trying to kill them off all the time disavowed so i wanted to run a game where the character big yeti Where the characters could just die. But by that point, I hadn't had any space version of Dungeon Crawl Classic. So Mm -hmm. I was like, I can do a Savage Worlds funnel, which is something in Dungeon Crawl Classics where where each player has a group of four characters and you see who survives the longest. Right. (laughs) Well, Savage Worlds is so easy. It's so quick that that game was really fun. And it was Savage Worlds in space which is what this game would be. Savage Worlds has great mechanics for handling combat against hordes of enemies. It, like we, in our special lost episode, we played with <laughs> Savage Worlds and yeah, you yeah. experienced how fast it flowed. Yeah. It was a good pay. It just, it, it moved right along. So right now what you have are two very simple characters. Each of those dots that you put in represents a die size. So a dot one is a D four. A dot two is a D6, a dot three is a D8, and so on. Whenever you want to do a thing in the system, you roll that die. And if you get a four or higher, you win. Cool, cool. Um, does it have something against, uh, does it have like a DC? Four. four that's so it, just yeah, for everything. 90 something percent of the die of the time, you're going to be rolling against a difficulty of okay. four. Yeah. Hmm. Unless you swing on the rope, hack the robot, do a double double somersault, and land inside the princess. <laughs> What's the DC on that? Oh, that's that's the difficulty of more than just numbers. That's the difficulty of taste and class. Mm. So we're we talking like a six. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so um, out of seven planets, what would you have rated this, Nathaniel? The movie. Yes, the movie. Two. Dustin. Really? Mm. My nostalgia would have rated it like a five or a six. Okay. Yeah. I, okay, I can I can yeah. go with that. So, yeah. So on that same token, my nostalgia about a six. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, solid four planets. I'm with you. Two. Two. This this was bad. <laughs> it didn't hold up. It, it had a couple moments where it almost pulled itself out, but they didn't capitalize on any of them. I. Kind Actually, I'm going to wish... take a planet away for using for 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 a couple. Yeah, I'll take a planet away. A solid away. three. <laughs> yeah, solid three. It's so under fifty percent out of all. <laughs> of it. You know, I, I'm not going to disagree with any of that because this. I wish I hadn't recently rewatched it. You know, I, I, I liked it better as I remembered it as a child. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, space herpes were way funnier to me. Yeah, before I rewatched it, now. Not so so I have a question about the space herpes. If we were like, we'll kind of circle back to if it were the redone, space free clinic, we'll take care of that. If, we were, if this were being redone today, would you CG that or would you have a, a an actual like? I'm puppet? all in favor of puppet. Okay, always, always puppet. All right, if we're on the if, same page, if physical effects can be used, use physical effects. Okay. That scene specifically reminded me an awful lot of Red Dwarf. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. The space herpes scuttling across the floor. I think that that thing coming out of the ham chicken. Was it a chicken? Turkey. I thought it was Her- turkey. turkey. Uh, whatever. Space, whatever. Space turkey was, was a nice send up of alien. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There um, were a lot like of said, nods there was, to other movies in this. There was a couple moments where I went, and then it just fell. S- somebody immediately after gave a shitty one liner, and I just went, I really fuck liked- you and fuck the movie. <laughs> I really liked the time dilation. I thought that was a. I well thought that was one of the worst done. I, I thought it was and the big old white fro. Well, no, I just thought the whole concept of like of time. They sure they were working with really shitty special effects, 
But it was really interesting them bringing something, a scientific subject like that, into a campy action movie. Yeah, because I think they they made comment that it was every for every 10 seconds they were in the dilation, it was one day. Yeah. Well, it also changed as their speed increased. Yep. Yeah. And then it ended up being a month and then did, a year. Did, did the kid die? No, no, no. They no, reverted, every, they, they, everything they broke went through back and reverted to normal. Back. So the kid the only, doesn't exist anymore? No. The kid doesn't exist anymore, but they end the movie with the shared look between the princess and, and him knowing she's going to have his baby. You're going to have some explaining to do <laughs> to daddy. The only, the only person that died in that whole sequence was uh, her, the princess's... Uh, Made, but no, no, I think Ron Perlman back. died, and uh, well, no, okay, no, I mean, yeah. it died of the time of just time dilation oh, yeah, of age, yeah, 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 because she was a skeleton, like, yeah, but I mean, she came back, everybody did, everybody came back, so including the head, so the kid is just gone, yeah, the kid's gone, it was it, all it's back into yeah. like eight divisions of a cell, yeah, so now Hollywood will just do a 30 years later movie, oh, please, God, <laughs> it's not a universe I care to revisit. Though I, I I'll, I'll go on it again. I I would like to see a remake. It's it's not that bad, but I'd like to see it darker with space templars and space herpes and space herpes. <laughs> I mean, there there were a couple of things that that were valid concepts that I, I would like to see again, like the punishment being castration and sale. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's an interesting societal thing. Yeah. Um, where we're just going to take out your ability to breed, but you're going to serve us for the rest of your life because we lobotomized you. That is an interesting thing. I, there's, there was a couple parts of this that are worth saving, but I don't want to see. At least a, on paper, I, I don't want to see a scene for scene remake of this movie. Yeah, I, I want to see a, a based on the characters of blah blah blah. <laughs> well, so Savage Worlds, and it was the Ice Pirates. The Ice Pirates. The ice Pirates. <laughs> ba, 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 bum. I wanted to like it. Sure didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so what's coming up next, guys? Coming up next is... Robots! Big robots fighting Godzilla-like monsters. I Pacific have, Rim. Yes. Way more awesome things to say about this movie. I really... Yeah. I like Pacific... Basically, it's... It's, it's, it's what it's, Transformers should have been. It's Transformers versus versus Godzilla. That's, no, that's it's what, what Transformers should have been. Well, okay, no. This to me going into this movie was Godzilla Save versus Save it for the episode, guys. Save it for the episode. <laughs> There's it, no annoying backstory. This is this is no, what Transformers should have been. It's a good movie. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it seems like it could have been Transformers versus versus Godzilla. Or Gundam was Gundams. Transformers versus Godzilla. Yeah. Gundams. I'd pay to see that cross. Gundams yeah, versus I mean, Godzillas. I think I, that was probably here, the Here's the thing, thing about this. Yeah. The thing about this that I think is most important. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the scene, and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello... Drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CC BYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>